Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my nighttime skincare routine. So this is basically gonna be a get and ready with me. And y'all, I'm keeping it so, so simple these days. Um, this is probably gonna be one of the most basic nighttime skincare routines you've seen in a really long time. I'm about to be 50 in less than three weeks. And for me, I'm always trying to address skin discoloration, skin texture, and then of course, I'm always trying to keep my skin as plump and as hydrated and you know as moisturized as possible and so yeah that's the reason for the products that i'm going to be showing you today but like i said it's really really simple i feel like some of you are going to be like why do you even bother making this video but anyway um yeah let's go ahead and jump in okay so the first thing that i do is i want to apply something to just kind of break up all the makeup on my face especially on my eyes especially when i wear primer but um i like to use these makeup wipes I get them, you can get them at the dollar store. I also, I can also get them at my local grocery store. It's called HEBM in Texas. And so I just apply a little bit of this micellar water for, it's, it's waterproof. It's for removing, you know, makeup that's waterproof. I put a little bit on one of these little towelettes. And the reason I like them so much is because they're super, super thin. I do not like thick makeup wipes, especially for your eyelashes. It just makes everything, I don't know, too complicated for me. So anyway, um, what I do is I just douse, you know, the tip of my little cloth with some of this micellar water, it's Garnier. And yeah, I just place it over my eyes and break up all that makeup. Now, as most of you know, I recently had um, upper blepharoplasty, so you probably still see some pinkness and some scarring. Um, it's so funny. This one was healing so much faster, and now this one's healing so much faster. But um, but they're still definitely in the healing process. This just makes it really easy because a lot of times, if you just go in with your facial cleaner, um, it doesn't get it all. So I like to try to get most of it first, and then go in and wash this stuff off. Even though it says like you can leave it on your skin, this micellar water, I still don't like to do that. I like to definitely get it off my skin. Okay, so this right here is where I use a Q-tip. I just like to put, you know, a little bit of this stuff on a Q-tip and then rub it, you know, onto my eyelashes. I use waterproof mascara always, always, always. I've never used anything different. Um, I just don't wanna ever get caught in a rainstorm <laughs> or, you know, something like that. I don't want to sweat, I don't want to cry, and then my, my mascara is running all down my face. Now this is where the really thin ones come in handy, because I can't do this with the thick ones. And what I do, I just kind of grab, rub like that. I don't pull. I did that whenever I was young, and I regret it, because I feel like it was one of the reasons why my eyelids, you know, got to be so saggy, and I had to get surgery, <laughs> because I was irresponsible, you know, whenever I was young, taking off my makeup. Okay, so now that I have removed all the eye makeup and mascara, now I'm gonna go in and wash my face. Um, probably since I started this channel, I think I've, I'm pretty sure I've been using this since day one. Every once in a while, I might mix it up. If my, if my skin is feeling a little bit sensitive, then I will use this Neutrogena, just fragrance-free, good old-fashioned, you know, bar of soap. But most days I use this, I'm all about exfoliating. I want to I want to constantly be turning those cells over because that process really slows down as we age and that's why our skin starts to look really dull and textured and discolored and all that stuff. So I really want to keep that skin cell turnover happening as often as possible and so I like to use products that have salicylic acid in it. So it's clear and you know it just bubbles up a little bit. I put it everywhere. Now, I've shown you guys these little washcloths over and over and over. They are very similar to the Magic Erasers. I get them on Amazon. They're so inexpensive. You get several, and they're just so soft, and I love them. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with a very light serum, and this is from e.l.f., and it's, it's called Holy Hydration. It's got jojoba oil, aloe, and vitamin E. I just love e.l.f. products. There are so many e.l.f. products that I love. I even love a lot of their makeup. So anyway, that's what I'm gonna put on next. It's really light, and that's what I love about it. It's a little bit milky, but then it's, it kind of like, just kind of goes on clear. And I put that on my eyes as well.
But of course I take it down my neck and, and my chest. Okay, y'all, I'm telling you, this is gonna be the most simple um, skincare routine you've ever seen. So I've got two tubes of Retin-A here, and I've got a 0.1%, and then I've got a 0 0.05. Now, I always use 0.1% on my forehead because my forehead is so tough. Like, it doesn't peel, it rarely peels. Occasionally, if I do this too many days in a row or, you know, something like that, it might peel, but typically it doesn't. Now, obviously, Retin-A is gonna be good for all the skincare issues that you might have. You know, it is just kind of the holy grail of skincare. So I'm like, why am I trying to use so many different types of skincare when I should just be making sure that I'm diligent with my Retin-A? And so that is what I've switched to. Okay, so now that I've applied that to my forehead, um, now I go in with my 0.05%. Now I, I do this different almost every day also. Um, most of the time what I do is I take my 0.5%, I gotta make sure that's the 0.5, and I put it all over my face, avoiding my you know under eye area, and I'm not gonna put it on my neck either. My under eye area and my neck obviously are gonna be the most sensitive So for my neck and my under eye area, I really like to dilute my Retin-A with a moisturizer. Now, one other place that I will put this directly is right up under my chin um, because that part doesn't seem to be as sensitive as this neck area. Now, in order to dilute my 0.5%, Retin-A um, so that I can put it around my eyes and my neck. I like to use this e.l.f. product right here, um, another phenomenal skincare product that I've been using for years now. And it's called Pure Skin and it's a moisturizer. It includes oat milk, ceramides, and niacinamide. Niacinamide is great for addressing discoloration. Ceramides are great for plumping the skin. It also includes cholesterol, um, which is a component of our skin. And I love when I find cholesterol in my products because I feel like they are so, so hydrating. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of these two together. I'm gonna apply it under my eyes and my neck. So I have about that much. I'm gonna put a pretty good liberal amount of this and then, you know, mix it together. And then I just kind of like leave my little fingerprints everywhere. And of course, I just judge by my skin. Um, if my skin starts getting irritated, I lay off the Retin-A for you know a day or two. And then I will actually take some of the 1% and I will mix it with um, the moisturizer as well and put that all over my chest. Now my chest is just like my forehead, just really, you know, stubborn and tough as nails. So I just never get, my skin never gets irritated there. So anyway, um, last thing, I just kind of take this, since it, since it is very thick and I feel like it's very occlusive, I will take that and just kind of pat it all over the areas that I didn't add it before, like, you know, my forehead and my cheeks and stuff like that. I will even, I will even put it over my eyelids I think, I think I have it everywhere else, but I just like to put on a really thick cream last just to lock everything in, especially because I sleep under a ceiling fan and I feel like ceiling fans can be very drying to your skin. So I always end with something really thick. If I don't use that, I will literally go in with some fragrance-free Gold Bond. I feel like Gold Bond is so underrated but um, because it is really occlusive and I especially like it on my neck. This is another pretty good one. Um, it's a gold bond. It's called Crepe Corrector. Honestly, they're so similar. You pay more for this, but I think this one is for necks. No, it's just a Crepe Corrector. So y'all, that is pretty much all that I do now. I'm just keeping it really simple and effective in my opinion. And the last thing that I do is I take my Aquaphor and smear it all over my lips, like 
heavily. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking the entire, you know, outside of the border even, um, because I'm starting to get those little lines, you know, above my upper lip and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like, no matter what you do, the aging mother nature and father time can be bullies, right? And they, nobody escapes, <laughs> nobody escapes. A lot of times, one thing that I do also is I will just dab it on my crow's feet because again, it's just so occlusive and I feel like it just really softens up the look of my skin and my lines and everything else around around my eyes. And I also put it on my scars. That's actually why I started putting it around my eyes because I was like, wow, it just really keeps my eyelids nice and moist. However, it's a little bit heavy. I think you've probably noticed I did not use any eye creams. I don't use any things separate from, you know, the rest of my skincare for my eyes anymore. Um, there are a few that I'm wanting to try, that I'm wanting to experiment with. I'm very upset because my favorite eye cream ever, which was by Eva Naturals, they changed the formula. And I don't know what they changed, but now suddenly I itch really bad on the inside corners of my eyes whenever I use it. And it was my absolute favorite. Um, and I tried to use it again actually last night and I just started itching. And so that's just such a bummer. Um, but it's been that way for about maybe a year now. I don't know if they changed the formula or if my body chemistry just changed or something and is more sensitive to something in the product. So, um, so I'm no longer using that, which stinks. But anyway, um, that's pretty much it. So that is all I have for you today. That is my nighttime skincare routine. I told you it was gonna be so basic, but I feel like it's really working for me and I enjoy how simple it is. I really do. Um, so I was caught up in the whole like 15, you know, product process also for a little while there. And then some, some products I just did not feel like were as effective. So yeah, that is my skincare routine, my nighttime skincare routine. I hope you guys enjoy this video. As always, I'm going to have links to everything that I showed you in this video in my description box below, except for the Retin-A, of course, because that's prescription only, unless you know another way to get Retin-A, I do not. I just always go to a dermatologist. And so, but if you do um, and you leave me a comment, I will go ahead and pin it at the top so that, you know, if if you don't have a dermatologist or you just want, you know, other, other avenues or ways to get your hands on some Retin-A, hopefully somebody out there will have some good information. Um, I think a lot of times when you're not going through a dermatologist though, you have to, I mean, you're doing it at your own risk. You know, um, you never know what is in products, especially if they're, you know, coming from overseas or something like that. So you have to be really careful. So I just prefer getting my, you know, Retin-A from a dermatologist or going um, across the border, maybe to Mexico, because I'm close to the border. I have gotten Retin-A there before. But anyway, so, um, so thank you so much for watching. I hope you're all having a fantastic weekend. My mom's actually visiting right now. And so I'm gonna go in there and hang out with my mom and my daughter and my son and my husband, the whole family. Anyway, um, I don't know why I just like named them all individually. And her dog, her dog is named Maybell. My mom's a dog girl. She's ever since, you know, I can ever remember, she's always had little dogs, you know, and they are like her little shadow. It's so cute. But anyway, so um, I hope you're all having a fantastic weekend and hopefully I will see you back here next week.